What's going on guys? This is the second video from this Italy trip. We're off to the Dolomites today, leaving Venice, and in classic Venice style, we're going via the water. But first, today's video is sponsored by Squarespace.com. Not only are there some incredible templates to help you make your website look ultra professional, but there are so many tools to help you build a strong online business. There's blogging tools, there's e-commerce integration, and there's even a way to create a members only section to your website. To get you started, head to squarespace.com slash Brendan Vanson for a 10% discount on your first purchase. The Canals of Venice, a photographer's dream. Narrow spaces filled with character and intrigue. Every corner turned, another big reveal. Every narrow passage, a secret held. The morning light reflected the dazzle of the city on the shining new coat of varnish on our canal cruiser. But our boat captain grimaced with every single tight spot. It's new paint, he'd say, with a scowl and a laugh. And as we leaned on that fresh shine, taking in the views, you could tell a part of him was dying inside that we would scratch the boat. He definitely didn't love it when I rested my coffee mug on the new paint. Soon though, we traded the waterways for highways and found ourselves climbing into the absolute beauty of the Dolomites. And we made it up to the Dolomites. We're kind of based in Bolzano and cruising all over the place for the next five days. So we're up in, I actually don't remember what this town's called, Sais? Something like that, um, to photograph this church. And it is just epic here. I mean, look at this peak. Uh, I'm hoping to get some side light on the peak and maybe some of this fall color lighting up. It's the first week of November and it's been a slow, or a hot winter or hot fall, I should say. So there's still tons and tons of fall color here. I'm taken aback by the beauty here and also the contrast of the past week. October 28th, I was in the Kalahari Desert. Three days later, freezing on Lake Ontario in Toronto. The next day, in Portugal's Algarve. And today, just a week later, in the sharp mountains of the Dolomites. Three continents in a week, four climates, my brain is having a hard time grasping it all. I'm overwhelmed. Okay, so I'm uh, set up. I'm kind of, well, I'm definitely down in the mud here. Uh, and the reason I'm down so low is because I'm actually shooting this at f2.8 and a lot of landscape photographers will question that for sure. But there's a good reason for it and it's a bit instagrammy but the reason is i want the focus on the church the foreground is boring it's really boring if i went f11 here the foreground would be like <laughs> sharp and it would be boring but as it is at f2.8 it's out of focus blurred out and it keeps the focus where it should be on the church and the peaks the hyperfocal distance at this width means that if i'm focused on the church the church will be sharp and the background will be sharp as well. So it's not a big deal. And I think it definitely looks better. I've got the minaret, I guess, of the church lined up with the peak. I think it looks really good compositionally, other than the fact that the hillside is totally sloped. And that's kind of driving me a little bit crazy. I don't focus stack. The human eye, for the most part, doesn't see the world completely sharply. So I don't want my photos to feel that way. I want my photos to feel the depth of three-dimensional, and playing with the depth of field creates those layers. We sat and waited to see if the light would pop. And as we did, a crescent moon snuck up from behind the peaks. And it was kind of hard to find a photo, but I tried. First, by framing the church tower under the moon. Then, leaving the church out of the frame completely and putting the power of the image on the mountain. Finally, more subtly with a long lens pano. We sat patiently for a while hoping the light would hit some of the clouds, but it felt like we were out of luck. The light was trapped in the valley behind the peaks. But then, 
Just as I'd finally given up and packed up my gear, a last kissing of light turned the high level clouds purple and pink and I managed to get the photo that I was hoping to take up here. Okay, that ended up being pretty awesome actually. Didn't get great light, but there was a moment right when I first packed up once <laughs> that the light just exploded in pink just off to the side. And I think I got a photo that I like. As for tomorrow, we're going to do another sunrise somewhere else. I'm gonna carry this video onto that. And I'm excited because this is special. It's after, there's a ton of tourists here. Normally it's already um, way colder and the weather's supposed to be phenomenal for the entire five days. So I'm stoked and I don't know where we're going for sunrise, but we'll figure that out pretty soon and I'll see you there really soon. We're at kind of another classic location. This is actually, I'm terrible with names. San Johan Giovini, Giovini or just St. John's Church <laughs> here. It's a beautiful location. The light's really um, a challenge though. We are finding that when you're in the Dolomites in winter, the light's coming from the south and you're shooting south a lot. So you're fighting backlight quite a bit, uh, at least at sunrise. So I'm kind of hoping that this uh, setup I got going on down there with the reverse Actually, that's my, um, my four stop grad, and, grad ND, my four stop medium ND. I'm hoping that with this setup, I'll be able to hold in the backlight on top and still capture the scene in the middle because it is beautiful. You've got these weaving lines, you've got fall colors up there, snow on the ground. And yeah, I just love the shot actually. It's really, really beautiful. But controlling the exposure is definitely gonna be an issue. Photographing locations like this if you're the respectful type like I am, is a bit of a challenge. The landowners have set up a little gallery for photographers to set up their gear and take in the classic view. But you're limited and squeezed. So I had to adjust by reaching my tripod out into the field while still standing on the platform. In doing so, I managed to get the angle I liked and a photo I loved. Um, let's photograph this actually already. It's F 11, 10 seconds, ISO 100, and you shift that. Yeah, like even right now, the color's just phenomenal. Let's take this. Wow. What a spot. Yeah, loving the Dolomite so far. Okay, I think that was a, a pretty good introduction to the Dolomites. We have four full days here beyond today, and there's definitely gonna be more photos. We went to kind of some pretty uh, basic, no, I wouldn't call them basic locations, but easy locations to start, to work our way into it. But on the next episode, I think we're gonna go to Lago de Bryce, uh, or somewhere like that, and the weather's supposed to be really nice. So hopefully we get a day or two where the weather really like allows the light to pop here. And yeah, I'm excited. So I'll see you guys on the next episode from here in the Dolomites. Peace.